and welcome or welcome back if you're returning. My name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then you should subscribe because that's what we do here. Also, if you don't mind throwing a like on this video, that super, super helps us out. I forgot I was going to read the journals as we went along, so I figured we'll do that today just to catch us all up it's story time it's guardian justice frey speaks to you of the first dark knight a goodly knight who sacrificed all in order to bring an untouchable man to justice too many fear the consequences such actions will bring an innocent suffer for our decisions she says consider her words as you seek out the source of the earlier scream <gasps> You come upon an old woman who beseeches you to save her granddaughter, a spirited young woman who is seized by temple knights after an altercation. It soon becomes clear that she is not the first girl to be taken under such circumstances, and that the temple knights' intentions are anything but honorable. Frey observes that the girl might survive the ordeal, but she knows full well that you would rather punish the knights for their crimes. The decision is made. Make your plans with Frey. Frey surmises that the Temple Knights will take the girl to the Supreme Sacred Tribunal of Halonic Inquisitory Doctrine. Oh my gosh, what a name. Oh, these names. The Supreme Sacred Tribunal of Halonic Inquisitory Doctrine. Okay. <sighs> she bids you follow her to the pillars and discuss your next course of action there. Fear, pain, rage... These dark emotions make for a potent fuel, Frey tells you. Should things turn violent, you may need to draw upon this darkness to strike down your enemies. Prepare for the worst and search the pillars for the Temple Knights. Oh, how they screamed when you came for them. How their cries of anger turned to fear. How you bathed in the fires of your hatred to bring them to justice. Frey's words were music in your ears as they echoed in the tribunal. As you promised them a reckoning, should they dare speak of this day again. As you tend to the girl afterwards, you ask if she recalls who it was that screamed her name when she was taken. She tells you, however, that only her grandmother cried out. Thanking you a final time, she hurries back towards the broom, leaving you alone with Frey. You have done well, Frey tells you, far better than she could have hoped, but the risks will only increase as you walk further along the path. Trust in me, she asks, and you want to. You know that you need to and that, when the time is right, she will be waiting for you where you first met. Aww. The Voice of the Abyss The voice, some say, is a beacon guiding the Dark Knight to her true calling. As you grow more accustomed to drawing upon your darkness, you will come to hear the voice more clearly. Such are Frey's words to you when you ask her of the voice. Communion will haste this hasten this process she continues but it cannot be conducted in ishgard journey with frey to little alamigo in southern thedalin i want you to kill something for me frey asks something fearsome which will push you to your limits she wants to watch you thrive in that moment and you want to show her gundabald should know of a suitable creature it saddens you to see how weak and complacent gundabald has grown and how his cowardice has spread amongst his people. They fear to tread near the lairs of a mere pistis, but you do not. At least he furnished you with all the goat meat for bait. Frey stands apart, waiting for you to show her who you are. Find a suitable location for the bait. Uh, you feel her eyes upon you, expectant, hungry, like yours. Where are those god damned pistis? The dead pistis lays at your feet, and you feel alive. Somehow, you know Frey is smiling. To mate out justice, one must be strong. A simple truth, which you already knew, of course. You are ready for communion, but it will not be conducted here. South of Little Alamigo, Frey is waiting for you there. Frey bids you approach and begin in the rite of communion. Close your eyes and hold out your hand. Breathe deep through your nose. Let the air fill your lungs and let it pass from your lips. Slower, slower. In the abyss, a wanderer's voice sings to you, forever moving without rest or respite. Though its meaning yet eludes you, Frey tells you not to be discouraged, further adding that it might belong to an individual whom you are fated to seek out. If so, none can say how long it might take to find them, but the mere thought of the journey stirs something within you.
heroic reprise. Frey knows you have not heard the voice in some time, and so she hopes to help you as she did before. Join her in Eastern Thaddeland and prepare for communion. It begins, as always, with an offering of blood. Seek out and slay axe beaks. Frey is watching. Something is lacking, but you cannot say what. Well, it is done. Perhaps Frey will be satisfied. A flicker of annoyance spasms across your face. How pointless, you think. And Frey smiles, for she knows your heart. Remember this feeling. Treasure it. It will serve you well in your next communion in Camp Drybone. I like this. I like that you kind of get, like, you know, your character's thoughts. Like, it's, it's really cool. I do like it. How dare Eisenbard interrupt our communion, as if pilgrims have not been kidnapped before. Yet here you are again, forced to risk life and limb to rescue fools who should have armed themselves. All because there is no one else. So be it. Raid the Amalgia encampment and rescue the prisoners. Fortunately, Amalja are far better sport than Pisces, eh? And the beastmen were happy to keep coming, howling with rage for their fallen kin, no matter how many you slew. Frey's chuckling is infectious, and you find yourself sharing her grin. Frey suggests you refrain from cleaning the blood from your equipment. Let Isambard see what you accomplished firsthand. Isambard, uh, Isambard's eyes wander to the blood stains, only to flee a moment later. You can hear the fear in his voice as he thanks you for saving the pilgrims. Frey ought to find that amusing. Those who have never known true sacrifice quake at the sight of it. You know this because Frey knows this. Extend your hand and prepare for communion. Sir, save, slave, slay. The voice drones on, each word resounding in your heart as the tapping of hammer and chisel. Sacrifice is to renounce that which binds you, Frey says, to recognize that which matters and forsake all that does not. Serve, save, slave, slay. Frey knows you cannot continue to carry all these burdens. Heed her warning before it is too late. Declaration of Blood The voice is waiting to be heard, yet you cannot seem to grasp it on your own. Though disappointed, Frey will help you to understand its intent. Only communion will suffice. Moraby Dry Docks will be where you conduct the rites next. Where do these people come from? These helpless, hopeless weaklings who see fit to beg the assistance of every passing adventurer. And now comes another, beseeching the Warrior of Light to recover some stolen chest or crate of only the gods know what. The merchant claims the Kikirin bandits and their leader will prove worthy prey, but we have been disappointed before. <laughs> All around you lay the remains of Kikirin, hacked to pieces, some beyond recognition. Chest heaving with exertion, you gaze at the bloodstained sword in your hands, uncertain how long you have held it. The pounding in your head intensifies, and you blink back the pain. Frey, where is Frey? Frey looks how you feel, utterly spent and in need of a rest. Finish it, she says. Finish what we started. Madness! Utter madness! That spineless sack of shite actually demanded compensation for his property. The nerve of these people after all we do for them. But Frey was not about to let that pass. Oh no. It was a thing of glory. Frey giving voice to our feelings. Our words tumbling from Frey's mouth. But why did she have to leave? Where could she have gone? Frey fears for us. She knows we cannot go on like this. The voice. We must hearken to the voice. Frey is right, of course. Frey has always been right. Only when we have renounced everything are we free to do anything. We can leave it behind, all of it. The Scions, the Alliance, even Heidelin. All we have to do is ask, and she shall set us free. Our answer, Frey knows what is best for us, so we will do as she asks. We will wait for her outside the gates of judgment and say her name, so she will know we are here. A pair of knights hailing from White Brim Front overhear your summons and recognize you as the Warrior of Light. Seizing the opportunity to exploit the good nature of the fool who could not wait for her comrade and put this nonsense behind her forever, the knights convince you to help them deal with a band of giants. Head to Janifin Pass and get it over with. While your courageous new friends distract the dross, you will seek out and slay the leader. What a brilliant plan! Nothing like the countless other times we slew someone else's enemies. You killed them. Well done. 
Can we go now? Serve, save, slave, slay. You struggle to hear the words of the knights over the pounding in your head. It would seem that Lord Drobot has summoned you to Whiteburn Front to discuss allegations which have been made against you, including the rather disturbing charge that you were observed conversing with a corpse. Nothing for it, then. Journey to Whiteburn Front and kill them all. <laughs> so it's just what you gotta do. <laughs> Darkness dwells within us all, but few are forced to confront it as you are. One moment, Frey stands before you, and in the next, it is your twin. As you wrestle for control with your dark side, the voices of White Rim Front cry out to you in support, even as your own voice belittles your struggle. And then, as quickly as it began, it ends. Your soul is in your keeping once more. By Lord Drillbot's command, none will speak of what they saw, a gesture you find more comforting with every passing moment. Even after regaining your faculties, your memories of Frey are still muddled. And though your dark side has been subdued, it remains your constant companion yearning to be free. Yearning to set you free. You need only ask. Okay, well, I like that. I can't believe I didn't realize that those things, like, said stuff like that. It would seem, madam, that my comrades have misjudged you. I realize this now, having witnessed the lengths to which Lord Drillmont will go for your sake. Aye, there can be no doubt that you are a true friend to Ishgar, which is fortunate, as we have urgent need of one with your skills. Pray accompany me to the Behemoth's Dominion at once. There is a demon among us, madam. A fiend which cannot be suffered to live. Oh, you're a demon! Lord Drillmont may be willing to let a dangerous vigilante roam free, but we are not so foolish. What sort of hero maims and murders knights sworn to the Holy See? Not I know. A heretic you are, and a heretic you shall die. Huh. Holy? Vi- Vile fiend! Do not think you could conceal your true nature from them forever. We will expose you for the abomination that you are, I swear it. Wielder of dark arts, consort of dragons, I will bring you to justice, even if it costs me my life. Shall we oblige him, then? <gasps> Whoa. Ooh la la. <laughs> well, are you going to kill him, or shall I? You're one of them, too, aren't you? This is the part where you beg for your life. The leave these lands if you value your lives. We will not show you mercy again. I pray you do not make a habit of following men plotting to kill you into secluded areas. Or did you learn not from prey? So you do know of him. I thought him fallen at the trial, but then I heard whispers of a woman seen wielding his sword in battle. So tell me, what became of him? How did you learn the arts? By the gods. No. Now that I think on it, tis not the first time I have heard such a tale. By the gods. We who consort with the darkness are never truly whole. There will ever be a part of us yearning to be free. We trade together, Frey and I. His was a strength beyond reckoning, but alas, it was not enough. It warms my heart to see that you carry on his legacy, that you have learned as much as you have with only his soul crystal to guide you, beseeks your potential. There is a matter I would discuss with you, but not here. My name is Sidurgu. Pray look for me at the Forgotten Knight in Ishgard. You're so tall, and you're so small. Given the circumstances under which you embarked upon this path, I fear you do not yet understand what it means to be a Dark Knight. The first of us bared steel against one of the clergy. This is true. He sacrificed everything he once held dear in the name of justice. So must all who would walk in his footsteps. Mayhap you think this will earn you the love of the common man. You are wrong. 
To many, you will forever be a criminal, a fiend who sows chaos and discord. These people will listen to the lies of our enemies. They will do their utmost to cast you out, or worse, as they did to Frey. If you are not prepared to deal with these consequences, then surrender your sword and soul crystal to me now. She's just like, no way. <laughs> you claim conviction, but your actions speak otherwise. You spared a man who tried to murder you. Mercy, some would call it. Idiocy, I name it. Tell us how you really feel. Aye, that's right. I followed him and gave him the mercy he truly deserved. Look at me, Burr. Tell me what you see. The first Discardians to encounter all raw Saldravanians. We had fled Garlemond's armies only to come to a land where we were mistaken for another nation's mortal enemy. They bared steel and came to kill us, but we did not die so easily. We spared them and sent them on their way. And how do you think they repaid our kindness? With fire and blood, Burr. With death for every man, woman, and child. Make no mistake, these are the wages of mercy. If you would walk the path, then you must accept this truth, for your enemies already have. Apologizing for misjudging your character, the Temple Knight implores you to accompany him to the Behemoth's Dominion, as he has urgent need of one with your skills. Oblige the Knight and lend what assistance you, assistance you can. Away from Whitebrim Front, the Temple Knight reveals his true intentions to execute you for your crimes against this order. His comrades charge swords bared, so you have no choice but to defend yourself. After a brief struggle, you are once more left alone with the knight. Even as he trembles with fear, the temple knight remains defiant, swearing to expose you for the abomination you are, even if it costs him his life. In that moment, a tall dark stranger approaches, offering to kill the knight in your stead. Before you can answer, the knight flees, leaving you with the stranger who names himself Sidurgu, a dark knight who trained with Frey. Intrigued by your potential, he invites you to join him at the Forgotten Night in Ishgard, where you might continue your conversation. Recounting the story of the first Dark Knight, Sidurgu stresses that to walk his path is to live forever as an outcast. Presenting you with the sword of the man who tried to murder you, he declares that mercy is wasted on your foes. To further emphasize his point, he tells you of how the first all right refugees to flee the Imperial armies were attacked by Ishgardians, having been mistaken for Dravidians, and that even though the all right showed mercy, the Ishgardians returned and slaughtered them all. As his voice trembles with rage, you take note of the young girl at his side. Though she avoids your gaze, you sense that she is watching you with a curious intensity. I see you yet walk the path, Burr, and it is well that you do. This is a matter I can discuss only with another Dark Knight. Swear to me that you will speak of it to no one else. Cross my heart and hope to cry. Thank you. Then I shall begin at the beginning. Our master, in his final moments, spoke to Frey and me in riddles. A heart bleeds, a man weeps, a soul burns. Thence comes the darkness to consume. Yet even in the depths, the flame endures. Submit to the flame, and harness the abyss. Frey and I did not understand his words. We hoped their meaning would become clear to us in the course of our duties as Dark Knights. And so we carried on, following the creed, until one day we found her. Dot dot dot. Ah, go on, Riel. Riel, she can be trusted. All right. Hello, nice blessings be upon you, miss. Right then. <laughs> she was fleeing from a unit of temple knights at the time, who were clearly intent on doing her harm. Needless to say, Frey and I took issue with that and chose to intervene. We went to ground after that, but Frey was caught out in the streets while fetching supplies. I cannot protect her, Burr. Not from the Temple Knights. Not by myself. I'm not even sure why they seek her. 
only that I, should I fail, her life is forfeit. Help me, bird. I shall share with you my arts. And when we have reached the limits of my knowledge, mayhap we can unravel the mystery of my master's final words together. I can aff offer you naught else. What say you? Then it is settled. We shall both serve as her guardians. Don't you have something to say to Burria? <laughs> yes? Uh... <laughs> what do you think of this guy? <laughs> gonna ask that. He doesn't talk as much. Not since Frey left. Sometimes he hardly speaks a word. Other times. But I knew he would never hurt me. <laughs> Why did they want to hurt you? They... They said I was an abomination. That I had to die to atone for my sins. Where are your parents? I... I... Nothing. Excuse me. Where was it? You'll look after Sid too, won't you? <laughs> Thank you. That puts my mind at ease. Sid. There's another Sid. <laughs> right, that's enough of that. To more important matters. Like I said before, I'm not quite sure why the Temple Knights are after Riel. They seem to believe something is wrong with her, but for the life of me, I cannot imagine what it could be. However, let's keep so, oh. <laughs> However, there may be a way to find out. The other day, I overheard a curious tale from a house Helen Art Knight recently returned from Camp Cloudtop. He spoke of Vanu healers who could see their patients' ether. So skilled were these healers that they could diagnose ailments with a glance. It may be not more than a fantastical tale told by a man in his cups, but even so, if there's a chance we can learn what, if aught, ails Riel, I dare say we must take it. Let us go to Camp Cloudtop and begin our search for a healer there. Uh, right then. The Vanu Vanu are not wont to parlay with outsiders under most circumstances. However, they may be willing to receive us if we come bearing a suitable offering. I am told they use gastornis feathers in their rituals. Mayhap that would suffice. Burr, I must ask that you prepare our offering while I look after Rio. Once you have it, we can journey to Vundu Akbindu together and entreat one of their healers to examine her. <gasps> You're just like everybody else using me. Frey! <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Bird Healer Man. What bestial gale blows the netherlings this far? Away with you, away! No, 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 wait. Look at this. This pretty feathers for you. Gastornis feathers? Hmm. Netherling knows the ways of the voodoo well. Let storm clouds give way to warm sunshine. Say your peace. She will do as we ask, Burr. Bring forth the child, Leatherlings. Let me look upon her face and know her heart. Soft rains to soothe your heart, little one. Do not be afraid. I like their dance. Drink of the winds, let thy soul take flight. Bathe in the mist and show me thy light. Come, come, show me thy light. What tempestuous winds rage beneath tranquil clouds? What great spirit dwells within you? <laughs> Speak plain, Vanu. I don't understand a word you're saying. This is no child. This is... Ah! The Tremontade follows you, Netherlings. You cannot remain here. Be gone from our lands. Wait, I don't... God damn it. <laughs> Ready your bane, bl Blade Burr. We've been followed. Over there. Someone's coming. I like his sword, that's fancy. That should be the last of them. Huh, I've seen these ones about before. They don't answer to the Lord Commander, or so I hear. Oh, well, in that case. 
bastards thought to take us outside the city, away from prying eyes. Don't want to be seen murdering a girl in the streets of the Holy See, do they? Even their staunchest supporters could have divided that. Seems our new friend has already abandoned us. Not for it, then. Back to Ishgard we go. Come along, Riel. I trust you no longer dispute the true nature of the Temple Knights. Murderers and thieves who drape themselves in the trappings of righteousness. Do not see, Burr. We are all that stands between them and their prey. There is no justice for these monsters save that which we must deliver. I will see them answer for their sins, I swear it. If I have to drown in the abyss to see it done, I will. Burr! Burr, Sid, I... I wanted to thank you both for protecting me earlier, and apologize for getting you too hurt. Don't be foolish. You've not to apologize for. In any case, at least we learned something of our enemy's motives. Not that I have the faintest inkling of what the healer meant by great spirit. So, a great spirit dwells within Rael, if that shaman is to be believed. We need answers, Burr, and I can think of no one better to ask than those who commune with spirits regularly. I speak of Gridania's conjurers, who can hear the voices of the Twelveswood, or so it is said. It's just as well. Frey told me she had an aptitude for their arts, What had taken him moons to learn. She mastered in days. Sometimes these talents run in the family, he said. They have her ancestors were conjurers after a fashion. Whatever the reason, there is no guarantee. It is related to what the shaman said or why the Temple Knights wish her dead. If past experience is any indication, they will be tracking us the moment we leave the city. It's not a question of if they will attack us, but when. But you will be ready for them, I see. Then let us be off. The road should be safe so far as Camp Dragonhead. Get close. I can feel it. Stay with Rael. I'm going to scout out the road to the observatorium. Follow at a distance. If they come, do whatever it takes to see her safely inside the walls. Good. That's a promise. Oh no. Is this another escort thing? Please be safe, Sid. I'm ready, Burr, whatever you are. Burr, thank the gods you're all right. God, I should have known they would strike when we were apart. Those are certain to return with reinforcements ere long. We must press on south, into Gradanian territory. Until we reach the city proper, we cannot be assured of safety. We leave now, Riel. You can rest once we reach Stillglade's fame. Gritania, here we come. Let's get out of this cold and frozen tundra. Ah, Burr, you are come to continue with your studies. Uh, no. A uh, great spirit, is it? If it please, I would examine this girl myself. It is the very least I can do for one who has ever been a friend of the Twelveswood. Ah, but where are they? Apologies for our late arrival. Rayel grew tired and I had to carry her part of the way. Aww. I could have kept walking. Our burdens need not be our own, child. There is no shame in sharing the weight. Who's the boy? Aha! Uh -huh. I am Brother Isumion, master of this guild. And though you will labor to believe it, young man, I am several times your age. You must be Rael. Burr has told me all about you. Pray come closer and take your ease. I ask that you close your eyes and listen to my words. Breathe deep. Feel the myriad life around you. Be as one with the world. Well? Who? The Vanu Shaman spoke true, after a fashion. Her spiritual presence belies her years. It is clearly not the product of training, rather an innate power with which she radiates, akin to that of the Elementals, or the Dravidians. You can't be serious. She's just a girl. 
Yes, she is. A very special girl. Mayhap you are familiar with the tale of the boy and the dragon gay? Never heard of it. Hardly surprising. The Archbishop declared it a heretic tale. And with good cause, it is a corruption of an older legend in which a man partakes of dragon blood, and in so doing, becomes one himself. Rumor has it that heretics hold such rituals for this very purpose, and if there is truth in such tales. Perchance she has ingested the blood of an ancient dragon. What? She's also half-crazed lunatic. <laughs> oh my gosh. I make no accusations, only offer a possible explanation. Moreover, who is to say that she did so knowingly? You. You. Excuse me, I... Ah, uh, pray forgive me. I did not mean to cause you distress. You have nothing to fear, my child, for you are in perfect health and blessed with two loyal guardians. Would that others could say the same. I think Riel would benefit from a brief respite before returning to Ishgard, unused to the rigors of the road, as she is. Why not show her to the Carline Canopy? An eel pie can do wonders for the soul. We thank you for your time. Fairy tales and fantasies? This is what he has to offer us? Heretics, I understand. But I expected better from the bloody head of the Conjurer's Guild. And you! Why don't you speak up for yourself? <laughs> Riel! She's eating. There were no windows, just walls of stone with little cracks to tempt your fingers, and iron bars colder than ice. I couldn't tell when it was raining, whether it was day or night. She didn't say I drank blood. All she said was... It's better this way. At least if they catch me, they'll just kill me this time. Can I finish my apple? Go ahead. <laughs> Dot, dot, dot. It's not a sin if someone made you do it. I did it. I won't let them hurt you. I know. Oh. You want another one? No, thank you. Right then. Keep an eye on her until she's finished eating, would you? I could do with some fresh air. Thank you for waiting with me, Burr. Shall we go and find Sid? Well, I've had my fill of the forest. Back to Ishgard, then. I think Riel and I can manage on our own for now. Shall we? That was a blessedly uneventful journey. Mayhap the Temple Knights were still nursing the injuries you gave them. Riel was worried they might try to ambush you on the road, but I assured her you would be fine. I must apologize, Burr. For all you have done for us, I fear I have yet to adequately recompense you. I will continue to share with you what skills I can. Alas, I fear we near the limits of my knowledge. Hey all, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon. If you're interested, that link is below. And that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right. From uh, all of us to all of you. <laughs> Bye.